Daya Wachiwake. Uh, hello, it's good to see you. My name is Angelica Trimbulianu. I am a enrolled member of the Oglala Lakota Nation from Pine Ridge Reservation in South Dakota. I am tuning in from the ancestral homelands of the Ohlone people here in Emeryville, California. Um, I am a interdisciplinary artist uh, working primarily in monotype printmaking, painting and sculpture. Um, I also utilize film and site specific performance uh, within my works. Um, I create graphic monotypes with a strict palette of red, yellow, white and black. Uh, my work has four main inquiries, uh, indigenous histories, uh, shape, color, and light. Uh, these prints represent a relationship uh, between light, shape, and our sacred mountainscapes. Um, I utilize a form of experimentation uh, within printmaking and sculpture. Um, I try to encourage the viewer to think about how we can push the boundaries of printmaking, but also how light acts when it hits an object and creates shape and shadow. Um, that's a notion that I have been very interested in in the last few years. Um, I'm also interested in how occupying a double bind or a double space forges a new path of our relationship to time and history um, and how that can transcend a, a subtler notion of, of time and historical spaces. Um, I feel this idea and concept looks to how we can speak to a more expansive framework of history um, in time, uh, a sort of temporal multiplicity. Um, for me, landscape uh, embodies impermanence, um, similar to the way that history takes shape in our spaces. Um, so this was my initial approach to my site-specific project Ayeska um, that you can see here. And these sculptures uh, interacted with the landscapes um, here, shown here in the in the Bacasica, the Badlands. Um, and so, yeah, my uh, initial approach was to create these sculptures in these spaces, but without leaving a mark. Um, they sort of let the landscape shape them into their malleable surfaces. Um, However, they don't alter the spaces themselves and they continue to move on to new forms um, as years go by and as I move with them. Um, but yeah, so today I was really interested in further introducing you to this site-specific project that mm -hmm. has changed my life and the way that I work. Um, I also had the pleasure of showing Maka, a uh, short film that I made utilizing uh, footage from this project, Ayeska, and I had the opportunity to showcase it at Mata Gallery um, in Los Angeles over the last couple of months. Um, but yeah, so Maka it was an extension of a body of work I started a few years ago um, titled Ayeska. Um, this footage seen in Maka represents a very pivotal moment in my work as an artist. Um, I, it was my first site specific project and uh, collaborative as well. It really shaped my thinking around identity and sacred space. Um, and so the landscape where these movements and these perseverances took place represents a greater sense of survivance um, past this eth ethno-political context. Um, it was really important to me uh, to honor the landscapes when I was forming and shooting my Ayeska sculptures. Um, these sculptural landscape forms operate more as entities um, that animate an unexplainable relationship that I have to my indigenous uh, spaces in South Dakota. Um, and so during this project, I began to really think about how these spiritual and political movements in combination with my body in these spaces um, could work as a vessel of sorts to articulate uh, this connection. Um, and so some background on Ayeska. Um, Ayeska was created partly on the grounds of where the Lakota danced our first ghost dance ceremony 
And for some historical context, the ghost dance was in some ways part of a religious movement in the early 1890s in response to the US government's attempt of erasure. Um, so following their ban on <laughs> forced sort of ban and assimilation um, against our native tongue and our traditional ceremonies, um, you know, this was a great violence against our visibility and our and our livelihood and our resistance, um, our identity. Um, so the ghost dance, you know, it comes from many different histories and it, it's not localized to one nation. Um, I think that each indigenous nation has their own relationship to this dance and this history. Um, but for me, it really shaped um, how I'm thinking about making my work as a contemporary living, working indigenous artist. Um, and yeah, just to go back to the ghost dance and sort of that history, um, the ghost dance was thought to be a renewal of, of the new world. Um, and for the Lakota, in my understanding, it was um, a dance traditionally done in a circular formation, a communal formation, um, all of us coming together um, to work against the serasure. Um, so yeah, it definitely um, really shaped how, you know, the imagery that you see um, in my monotype work uh, currently, and there's a lot of circular shape and form. Um, so yeah, just, you know, thinking about yellow and, and circular shapes within my work. Um, I just started to think more about these concepts and I began to then become really interested in the way that light holds history. Um, when you look up to the sky, the light that you see traveling down um, to your eye has been traveling for millions of years. Um, so I'm interested in this idea of like, how does light take form of history? Um, you know, what are our approaches to history and understanding it um, and what can that look like and uh, just taking it out of a westernized ideation. Um, so that's why often my, my newer works and as well as my older work in Ayeska, um, you see that my sculptural work plays often with light um, and shadow and reflective surfaces. Um, as you can see in my prior slide and my Ayeska installation in 2018, I had a four foot diameter uh, sculpt or mirror reflective surface that I then suspended my forms above. Um, and yeah, that reflective surface, you know, is still something I'm thinking through a lot and my relationship to it changes uh, quite a bit. But in that moment, I, was really trying to reference um, a traditional vision um, that I heard through one of our oral narratives um, about a vision that one of our medicine men had of um, the idea that the ghost dance would help suspend us um, into a protective space, uh, in between space, um, a space that is untouched. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I often reference, you know, um, the space as a place of ceremony. Um, and this ties together the sort of vessel or holding of my work as a more personal place versus political. Um, I reference, you know, directly the prophecy of the ghost dance, um, but I'm really taking in, you know, my own spaces of memory and my own aesthetics of home and kin. Um, and so moving forward, I've been sourcing white deer hide uh, from my community directly in South Dakota. Um, I'm really interested in continuing the site specific aspect of my work, but in a different light, a different vision. Um, you know, I'm really interested in, you know, we call ourselves the Buffalo Nation and there's a really strong tie uh, to the buffalo and there's history behind that tie just in the ways that our, my, the Lakota you know, moved across the North American landscape. We were introduced to the buffalo and um, it, it became a huge part of our livelihood. Um, 
And so just to sort of wrap that all up, it's, you know, I'm really thinking about kinship via land and language and um, narrative and color and shape. And I think that it's really important um, for me to, you know, think about how I can visualize uh, a map um, and how that I can advance a narrative through, you know, my visual mapping of um of my being, I guess. Um, so by seeking these more non-traditional, but also traditional contemporary uh, forms of, you know, indigenous world making, um, you know, I'm really saying that we are not bound to subtler notions of history and landscape and time. Um, and I want to continue to question what language can look like and what history can look like outside of a maybe more Western construction, um, you know, is, is time seen in our light? Is it seen in our color? Um, and yeah, these are just things that I am still working through um, as seen in this newer body of work, Voice Like an Insect. I am tying in that concept of circular shape and the interconnectedness um, that is, you know, important to my people, to my Lakota nation. Um, but I'm also utilizing in the title a line from one of my own, my sister's uh, poetry. Um, Mayin Trimble Yanu has greatly <laughs> influenced my visual work quite a lot. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to announce that I will be showing this body of work um, starting in November 13th at the Contemporary Museum um, in Marin. So stay tuned for that exhibition. I'm really excited about it. And yeah, that was just a short sort of cap on uh, my work and my thoughts um, and how Ayeska has really shaped uh, the work that I'm making here and now. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it's been such a pleasure working with Mata and I just want to give a huge thanks uh, to everyone who's been involved in uh, this gallery and these projects and for tuning in. So thank you. <laughs>